Hi there folks, it's Tom Myers here. I'm sitting with Dr. Robert Schleip, who is over in the States visiting and we're teaching together. We just finished one day. We're about to start on the second day of talking about interoception and its importance to uh, how we work with our clients. But it's just great for me to sit with my old friend Robert. We've been friends since 1980, I think. Somewhere in there, 81, and uh, have been journeying down the fascial road together. We both started um, uh, in the Rolfing School, and we both developed a great deal since then. Uh, but Robert turned himself into a researcher, from a body worker into a researcher. I had no idea how much work was involved in that, and I don't think that he had uh, as much of an idea of how much work was involved in actually becoming a researcher. But he has, and so we um, meet as both practitioners, and I've been called a researcher too. They call me Dr. Myers in China, and I go, uh, no, I'm not Dr. Myers, because uh, I'm not a researcher at all. I don't have that detail. So I would like to ask Robert a few questions about <laughs> yeah. the research. Um, I'd, I'd actually like to give you a chance to talk about interoception first, because that's something that's really new in the idea of how we perceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you could say a few words about that, uh, just to sort of set the scene, it would be great. Well, the topic came to me about 10 years ago when we were, when we were writing the textbook on fresh air, the Elsevier book, Fresh Air's Attention. The big white book. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there I had to write a chapter on the nervous system and fresh air, and we knew that fresh air has a lot of role for proprioception that was known with the somatomotor cortex, with the Ruffini receptors, etc. But already at that time, I got the newly emerging field from my former background from psychology about interoception. So I worked myself for the chapter that I wrote at that time, together with Heike Yeager on interoception, and I got really intrigued. So you know the feeling when you prepare for a damn chapter that you have to deliver on time, and then in the middle of the night you get really turned on, and it makes so much sense suddenly. <laughs> and then so you have to convey it to somebody else, yeah. but you don't have the words. Yes, I know yeah. exactly. So, so uh, I got really triggered then, and since then I've, I have been following the research. I'm now collaborating with some researchers in that field, uh, in Germany, who are taking measurements, and I've been following them. And uh, we have been in the somatic uh, uh, field since several decades. And for me, it's, it's uh, going back more to the felt sense, and not only to proprioception, where is my shoulder, do I have a low doses, do I not have a low doses, is my head over the, the shoulder joint, etc. But uh, how is my stomach feeling, my, and how is my gut feeling? How alive do I, how much at home do I feel in my legs mm -hmm. after they have been touched? Uh, how, uh, so, the interoception is more about the felt body in terms of effective coloring, mm -hmm. in terms of physiological processes. So, not so much by mechanic and, and locomotion. So, temperature, warmth, tingling, being at home, being alienated, the subjective experience of how heavy are my legs, how light are they, and that's often what we have in the sessions. It is often what we have in the sessions, and it's something that puts us sort of back towards the woo-woo side of it, because, I, I don't know you, but you have spent a lot of time with yoga people and Pilates people and personal trainers over the last 10 years, as anatomy trains moved into the movement realm. And I've always cringed a little bit, I cringed a little bit in the Rolfing School too, mm -hmm. is that we were going to get to the correct place where the shoulders were sitting biomechanically correctly and the neck had come out a bit slower cervical flexion mm -hmm. and that was the Rolf heaven that we were looking for yeah. back in the old days. And uh, the first intimation that I got of this was when I went to study with uh, Baral and his school and realized that, oh, if somebody's liver is in a problem, they uh, is having a problem, they will make their spine adjust so that the liver is happy. Mm -hmm. And so then you're trying to take the rotation out of the spine, but unless you understand that about the liver, you can do everything that you want to, to the psoas, the diaphragm, and the back muscles, and it's not mm -hmm. going to happen because the body will prioritize the organs over the musculoskeletal yeah. system. Yeah. So, now, if we're looking at this in terms of proprioception and interoception, the body will prioritize interoception over some proprioceptive correctness. You will make yourself correct. That's very nice. I never looked at that way, but it makes total sense to me. 
Mm -hmm. So that if I have an interoceptive feeling, uh, this morning I'm going to do this exercise where I'm going to have the people hold their arm up mm -hmm. forever, and your arm just keeps increasingly tell you, I want to come down, I want to come down. It would be a good idea if you came down. Don't you think you have to bring your arm down now? Oh, I need something from my pocket. You make up all these excuses, yeah. and it's just because the feeling becomes increasingly motivated to come down. That's not proprioceptive, yeah. that's interoceptive, which we thought of as organs, but it's out not in the organ organs, but in the organs out in the body, checking yeah. the yeah. temperature. Yeah. That, start with the start with the thermal reception with interoception. Yeah, so that seems to be a basic one. So whether you feel cold or warm mm -hmm. uh, comes from free nerve endings. So all the interoceptive nerve endings are free nerve endings. Mm -hmm. And some of them are temperature sensitive. Uh, other ones uh, measure chemical concentrations. Mm -hmm. uh, nociception seems to be a subset of interoception. And basically it's body signaling uh, that is related to physiological needs. Mm -hmm. And it's always uh, processed through the insula, so it doesn't go directly to your somatomotor cortex. Mm -hmm. And in the insula it's always uh, attached to emotional values. Is it more pleasant or less pleasant? Mm -hmm. And that is different. So with proprioception, uh, you can ask me which foot is more forward. I say the left one, but you ask me if it's more pleasant than the right one. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. you know? But with uh, temperature changes, you, you always give a shit. Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, the, this is more pleasant. Now it gets too warm. Now it gets... So you have a uh, homeostasis. Mm -hmm. You say this, now I have eaten in enough, so uh, hunger is an uh, interoceptive uh, perception. Mm -hmm. And of course it, it is very much influenced by our emotional expectations. And, uh, and it's always compared with effective coloring. So temperature is influenced okay, by, but so also tiredness. So muscle soreness mm -hmm. is not proprioception, no. but it's it comes from myofascial tissue. So you have free nerve and it's not only in the guts, but you also have them in myofascial tissues. So somewhere out here, if I'm holding this out here, the temperature of local cells maybe is getting too hot. Not, mm. I'm too hot on my skin because of oh, the sure. yeah. I'm too hot on yeah. my skin because of infrared yeah. rays. Um, the, the, the thermodynamics yeah. of holding your muscle out here when it's not ready for it, uh, is, is it damaging? I don't think so. I could hold my arm out here for quite a while yeah. without damaging it. Yeah. I could get into my Wim Hof thing and I am not going to put this arm down, you know, I'm going to sit in the ice bath, I'm going to, whatever it is that yeah. the Wim Hof people are doing to test their will, they're essentially testing their interoceptive will, right? It's, they're putting their will against, yeah. well, they're putting their will against the interoception. Yeah. I, I, I got in an ice bath at a, yeah. the suggestion of yeah. a Wim Hof student, he said, you so should get in this ice bath. Maybe in the next video, we will sit in ice baths. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. I think my interoception is going to tell me that I'm going to have a hard time talking with Robert. Oh, well, you have to, so next time you come to Munich, I'll take you to the cryosizer, which is just around the corner. Oh, yeah. It's minus 130 yes, degrees Celsius, and you stand in this tube, and we will be talking with each other. And uh, if they don't talk with you, the three minutes are extraordinarily long. Uh -huh. But if they mentally distract you, it, it doesn't take it. No, I didn't find it very long yeah. at all. I, I could have been there for quite a while, but they put gloves on you, so your hands don't get cold. Yeah, yeah, and the shoes and <laughs> socks or something. <laughs> So, so you're right, so sometimes you need a strong motivation to override unpleasant interoceptive feelings. Exactly, because we go down the road of making our interoceptive feelings easy. Yeah. Yeah. again and again and again, yeah. and that's part of the habit. The but it's habit. also, and that's where the new research from Eliza Feldman uh, Barrett comes in, uh, that the interoception is often only very to a very minor degree influenced by real bodily perceptions. So uh, how we feel our body is largely influenced by cortical interpretations. So she says emotions are, are usually bodily sensations that are constructed by the expectation in the environment. And she gives some uh, interesting examples. So you give somebody adrenaline or something like that, or high caffeine, mm -hmm. and then you you tell them why are you so angry? 
I'm not angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and so then the verbal feedback you get from other people makes you interpret your high adrenaline as if you are angry and then you become angry. Uh -huh. And you do the same thing, but then the verbal feedback from, from the people is you seem to be enthusiastic uh -huh. and you become enthusiastic, not by the bodily uh, information from the adrenaline in your heartbeat, but by the context, the social expectation or context around it. All right. And this is where, where your work uh, makes a lot of sense. Sure. And seeing you in, in the exercises that you do in the class, so you take the bodily sensations and you give a positive uh, interpretation about it. <laughs> and then the arm is not just tired, it is uh, having a breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> you, or, you're so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or sitting in, in that ice chamber, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can create a context in which the time goes rapidly by. Now, I remember when I was young, it was the gate control theory of pain, yeah, the yeah. second wall, and that was, oh, your mother strokes you like this, and that blocks the channel, so yeah. the nociceptive yeah. pain can't go up. But now that we're looking at interoception, we interpret the mother's stroke in a different way. Oh, oh that's very, uh, so it's not just the proprioception, but they found these tactile C fibers, mm -hmm. which are interoceptive. So they do not, pro and they are in the skin and the subcutaneous connective tissue, mm -hmm. and only where you have hairy skin, so you don't have them on the lips and on the palms here, mm -hmm. because they were related to grooming. So when the monkeys had stress, mm -hmm. they are grooming each other. Mm, now we have social media. Yeah, <laughs> we groom each other on social media. <laughs> and, uh, and they do not project to the somatomotor cortex. Uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, they seem to have a, have a big function, and now they have, uh, I read uh, a month ago, they now found the perfect speed, uh, not, not for dogs, I think it's, it's more rapid for dogs, but it's a three centimeter per second is, is the ideal speed. You can also do one centimeter and 10 centimeters per second. So right now I'm grooming. Okay. This is not grooming, mm -hmm. and this is also not grooming, but this is grooming. And they measure So so when we do this So we, we have to teach our mothers how fast to go down the ladies. They are doing that now. <laughs> and and in geriatric uh, home and people who are in the uh, uh, they, they are out of consciousness, they are training nurses to do this, but they need to make eye contact, they need to smile before and then you do this. It's, uh, Okay, so if you're talking about smiling and eye contact, then you're really talking about something that is a very high brain or high yeah. high part of the personality construct. I don't know enough about brain science to say this, but uh, where does this meet? Where does the body sensation and the cortical projection of myself or the projection of my world, the simulation of our world that we do inside, where do they meet? Is this thalamus? Is this... A lot goes through the thalamus, but, but according to Liza Feldman Barrett, yeah. with her uh, predictive interoceptive coding theory, that's like kind of the latest fad in the interoceptive research scene right now, it, it's a very dynamite field. Uh -huh. So the, their uh, increase in publications is much more ex explosive than in fascia research. Uh -huh. And uh, according to her, a lot of it is happening in the insula. So the insula fishes once a while for real information from the body, but otherwise it plays it, its movie, what it thinks uh, the body is experiencing. Uh -huh. And uh, so it, it seems uh, that the insula, it, it's communicating with the thalamus, it's even communicating with the somatomotor cortex once a while, uh -huh. and it's fishing for information only if it needs it only from the real body. Or if it needs a real change, if yeah. it's something... Yeah changes substantially from the outside. We used to talk about this in terms of proprioceptive illusions. If you step into a room that's five centimeters lower than you thought it was mm -hmm. going to be, you get a real shock that goes up through your body. Yeah. Your, your brain is not prepared for the forces that come up through the body. Yeah. If it's if it's four inches higher or four inches lower than your yeah. expectation, you yeah. really have the expectation of where your foot is going to meet the ground, and the muscles are prepared to do that yeah. little isometric yeah. contraction as it has happened with every other step from previously, but that's a proprioceptive illusion. From what you're talking about, I could be under 
tons of interoceptive illusions all the time because I'm actually constructing them from the north side, not yeah. feeling them from the south side. So I think we always uh, live in a movie, and that's to, uh, and the the world that we think we are interacting uh, is only out there. So the Tom that I'm seeing there is probably very different to the one that that is really sitting there. <laughs> so, <laughs> you find that so, really so, so I live in a movie uh, in terms of proprioception, in terms of hearing, in terms of seeing, but uh, but to a large degree also in terms of how I perceive my own emotions mm -hmm. and how, how I perceive my interoceptive other signaling. So we play our movie uh, dependent on what we expect based on the past and only if there is a friction happening, that something doesn't fit to my expectation, then I may say, is, there, is Tom really as pleasant or as aggressive? Mm -hmm. So then you open your senses. But I play my movie without uh, the external reality. And that's not only case for some lunatics out there. It's no, it's the case for all of us lunatics. Yeah. So we construct reality to a major degree, and we allow minor <laughs> sensory information. <laughs> that's so discouraging. <laughs> <laughs> all right. but, but we can inspire our clients to construct a more beneficial reality, in which their body is not an enemy, in which their body is as interesting as the TV they are watching. Or what they're seeing or hearing, yeah, what they're seeing or hearing on the TV, exactly. Good. And now we've become part of your movie. So you can take us in interoceptively and see if you can use that. we got to go to class and go teach. I, 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 it's been fun. Take care. Bye-bye.